Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of Profiles and Risk. I am your host, Nick Lamparelli. On this wonderful fall day, seems like fall in New England, uh, I am pleased to welcome Kurt Dennison. Kurt is VP of Ericsson Insurance Advisor and is also the founder of Risk Review, which you're going to see in a second. Uh, riskreview.com is helping insurance agents improve their customer experiences by transforming the way in information is collected from clients and other related parties. Kurt, welcome. Thanks, Nick. It's great to be here. And does thanks it feel for like, me. Does it feel like fall where you are? Uh, unfortunately, it does. Uh, yeah, yesterday, I think, was the first day uh, going into the office where it was a little chillier, uh, but uh, yeah. fortunately, it came back and it was much nicer towards the end. Yeah, it's my favorite time of the year. Like, you can open all the doors and windows, uh, nice cool breeze. I, I really like it. Um, I, thanks for coming on. Um, I want, uh, we're, we're going to go into uh, your product, which I'm excited to show off. Me too. This episode. Um, but let's rewind the tape a little bit. Let's back up. Let's um, give the audience a flavor for who you are and what you do. Um, so Great. You, you are in insurance. You're a VP at Ericsson Insurance Advisors, and, and we have met before. And um, let's start off with um, your career and how you started. How did you get into insurance? Uh, so about 11 years ago, uh, the agency owners at Ericsson approached me to have a lunch uh, about joining their firm. And prior to that, I was a, a payroll and benefits consultant uh, for another company. And I had helped them through a business transition. And, you know, they were impressed by my professionalism and uh, the attention to detail and the responsiveness and the uh, persistence uh, that I had. And they said, no, you might be good in the insurance business. Uh, and they were looking to grow. Uh, so we had lunch and we, uh, I was impressed by their vision and their uh, laser beam focus on the high net worth space. And so... I decided to join the firm. They invited me in, and uh, since then, I haven't looked back. Uh, it's been a great ride. What was it like at the beginning? So you're, you're coming in from somewhere else, and uh, did you find uh, – was it intellectually stimulating at the beginning? Did you find that there were still financial pressures? How did you overcome that first year or two to know that this is, this is an arena that you could build a career on? Uh, great question. It was uh, incredibly in, uh, stimulating. Um, for the first two, three years, basically, I sat down, uh, sat outside of uh, my boss's office, uh, just listening to his conversations with clients, absorbing everything I could, talking to the team members, learning everything I could about insurance. Um, and so, you know, meeting with clients, doing client reviews, it was an immersive learning experience. And uh, it took a while to ramp up. Uh, to be honest, but once I did, uh, it was it was great. It was very interesting, uh, learning about the different risks and how to cover them, and you know about insurance. I grew up in an insurance family, um, but didn't really know about it. Uh, and so this was uh, it was really really neat. I've you know, yeah. seen it all unfold. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, Azima Hartley and Lisa Linz Lindsay from PRMA Private mm -hmm. Risk Management Association great. on. Uh, so that was that was a wonderful conversation. I love the event that they have um, every year. And so, so I want to talk uh, just a, a few minutes on the high net worth space because it sure. is unique. Um, you're, it, although it's considered somewhat personal lines ish, uh, a lot of a lot of the accounts in the high net worth space are worth tens of millions of dollars, which on the commercial side would make them middle market. Right. You essentially have to learn a little bit about commercial, a little bit about personal lines. It is very unique. Could you spend a couple of minutes and just talk about the uniqueness of the high net worth space? Sure, absolutely. Uh, no, it is very unique. And I think what makes it unique, first of all, is the lifestyles of the clients that we're dealing with. Um, the lifestyles, the locations of their properties, uh, the uses for their assets. So, you know, example of lifestyles is, you know, a lot of them don't have primary residences. They have multiple residences. So uh, every residence is, you know, used uh, one to two to six months a year, and then they're off to another place. Um, so dealing with uh, unoccupied homes that are, um, you know, in need of risk management throughout those periods of unoccupancy is an issue. Uh, locations are unique. You know, uh, people have homes uh, in, uh, you know, on mountains, uh, in 
PC-10 territories that are over five miles from the fire department. Uh, they have homes on Fisher Island that are negatively elevated. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, and the, and the uses, they have collections of art and jewelry and rare books um, that are loaned to museums or to friends, um, or they have museums on their properties where they, they allow uh, the public to come in and take a look at them. So the thing that makes uh, high net worth clients unique is, um, you know, is those things, uh, location of their assets and the values of their assets. You know, it's not, it's a million dollar home, but it's also a $20 million home or a $50 million home. And, you know, what comes along with uh, insuring those things, um, you know, the security systems, the, you know, the changes that are going on. You know, we have clients that renovate homes every year. Uh, so there's, there's something constantly going on in these people's lives. And as a risk manager, um, our challenge is to keep up with that and to make sure that they continue to be well covered uh, as they continue to live their lives, um, which are, as you say, unique. Yeah, it, it gets, I start thinking of like the traditional homeowner's policy right? and how there are clauses for, uh, for vacancy, you know, right. that, that kick in pretty quickly as, you know, as well. So like it, go, it goes as deep as the policies, the policy forms have to have specific language um, how you group together exposures and risks um, to have them covered. And then you mentioned all the risk management stuff. You can't leave, you know, a million dollar piece of art in a property that you're not going to be in for three, three, six months at a time. You know, it's uh, that there, there's a theft thing there, which, right. which also explains why the PRMA exists Right, is because the exposures are so complicated it makes sense to have a private organization uh, that that can educate uh, professionals that have to deal in that space. Uh, you you do have a role in the PRMA. Could you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, sure. No, I love the uh, the association. They've done such an amazing job over the last four years building it and uh, bringing on new members and and raising awareness. Uh, my role is a volunteer. Um, I volunteer my time because I think the uh, the association has a, a great mission. Um, I think that there's a need uh, to build awareness, not only, you know, within the ranks of agents and brokers, but also in the marketplace. Um, and there's a need to, to build the awareness for the need for uh, risk managers and insurance specialists um, in the high net worth space. And so uh, I'm fully on board with the mission. You know, I get involved with them in a number of, um, in a number of activities. Uh, one is in the marketing. I co-chair the marketing committee. Um, I also co-chair the uh, uh, Thought Leadership Committee, uh, where we develop research and, and thought leadership and, and uh, white papers to share with our members, uh, as well as the, the public at large uh, and other associations that might find it useful. And uh, I co-chair the, um, uh, the event committee, uh, the Greater New, New York City um, chapter, uh, which is a, a national effort um, on the PRMA part to bring high net worth specialists and related parties like family offices, wealth managers, and financial advisors, uh, estate planning attorneys together on a local level to discuss risk management for high net worth individuals. So we held our first meeting in New York City a couple months ago on cyber risk, and uh, it was great success. And, and so, you know, again, it's just uh, bringing people together who do what, we, what I do uh, risk management for high net worth individuals to to help, you know, uh, improve and um, expand the the level of service and um, knowledge that we have for our clients. What would you say to a young professional about volunteering? I, I, I'm assuming that uh, you're volunteering and um, you know you're you're getting some kind of emotional or spiritual some kind of uh, return back. Right. Um, how important is volunteering for a young professional in, in the development of their career? So it's incredibly important. And I think, you know, if you have any opportunity to volunteer um, either at the community level where you live or in your, in your work, uh, it's great. Um, for me, it's been an educational experience because the, the volunteer opportunities open you up to new new experiences that you wouldn't see otherwise. Um, getting involved with the PRMA, I've been able to, you know, meet CEOs of companies, uh, have discussions with board level uh, insurance company folks and, uh, and agency folks, uh, and be exposed to things that I would never 
uh, that I would never hear about. Um, so it's been invaluable and, uh, and a lot of fun. So I would highly recommend it if you have the opportunity. And, and with the PRMA, uh, you know, I'm looking for volunteers to join the committees. And I know Azima and Lisa are always looking for volunteers. Um, this is very much a grassroots effort. And uh, we want uh, every agent across the country who's interested in the high net worth space to get involved and, and in some way and help out, whether it's a small way or a big way. So, yes. so for anyone that's listening, go to the show notes. I'll put a link up to the PRMA. Um, it's an awesome organization. They have an awesome event. I'll put a link up to uh, uh, Lisa's and uh, Azima's uh, podcast as well. You should join. And Kurt needs help. So he, <laughs> please, if you're in the New York City area, please volunteer. Uh, Kurt, I wanted to transition over to the gist of this particular presentation. And Great. Uh, you created a product, you, um, and so you're going to demo it. But I wanted before you do that, I wanted to go into uh, why. <laughs> what, what you know, you 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 have something good going on here. Why do you want to create a tech product? What did you? What was missing in the market that you felt like I need to build this because no one else is going to? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so a few years ago, I went through an educational program with Chubb and uh, the Wharton School. And it was to get a designation called the Certified Advisor of Personal Insurance. As part of that program, uh, they have us do a project. And my project was focused on improving the client experience in the high net worth space. And the, the problem that I was trying to solve was the, my ability to gather information from clients quickly. You know, for example, I would you know, send a, you know, a few questions to a client about a new risk that they purchased, and I'd have to wait you know, several days uh, to get that back or I'd have to call them or whatever the case was. So I said, let's, ha let's figure out how to make this better. And uh, I started using digital forms. Uh, for new risks, I started using digital forms for renewal questionnaires uh, and other service related transactions. And I found that I was getting information back faster. Clients were uh, engaging with them immediately and uh, I was able to move uh, the business through faster and, and add more value value to my client relationship. So I said, you know, this is great. I love it. I've been using them for three years. Um, I've done webinars uh, for the PRMA where I talk about them. And at the end of the webinar, inevitably, uh, you know, we have three or four people say, hey, can, can we get a copy of your questionnaire? Um, and, how, and, and what are the questions that you're asking? So I thought there was an opportunity to help uh, fellow agents out. Uh, and instead of all of us having to build our own questionnaires, let's have one one company do it for us, uh, and uh, we can all use the same ones uh, to create some consistency, but also to help deliver value quicker using technology. Uh, and so that's kind of where Risk Review was born. And um, you know, I, I, I've been interested in the insure tech movement uh, since I think a little bit after it started, and I've been involved uh, with insure tech Hartford, insure tech Boston, New York. It's a very energizing community. So. Um, I see that uh, the insure tech movement is creating a lot of change in our industry, and I wanted to be part of it no matter how I could do that, because uh, I think it's going to be important going forward for, for agents to be part of it. Uh, and so uh, risk review, uh, I'm excited about because I think uh, agents all over the country uh, can spend less time building forms and more time uh, engaging with clients and building relationships uh, through their use. Uh, so I'm excited to show it to everybody. Yeah, fantastic. Let's do that. Um, right. Why don't you go ahead and share your screen and let's uh, walk us through risk review and okay. uh, some of the features and benefits of it. Excellent. Thanks. So when a, a user comes to the website, uh, they can log into their account by hitting the login button. And I'm going to log into a demo account. Okay. So once a user logs into their account, this is the dashboard. And from the dashboard, the first thing that a user would do is create their profile, their public profile. And in the, in the sign-on process, it's, it's pretty seamless of how they get there, but we'll just go there by editing profile. So on this form, there's a place to enter their name, upload their picture, upload their company logo, their contact information and social links, as well as their name and a brief bio about them. Here are the forms that we offer right now. Risk evaluations are our renewal questionnaires and service forms, and new policy options are our quote forms. 
We also have an other inquiries button that allows a user of the uh, profile to send an email to their agent and a refer a, a friend button that allows the client to copy a link to the profile to share with a friend. They save the profile and then they can view it just to see what it looks like. And here's what a, a public profile looks like. Uh, risk evaluations will take you to our renewal questionnaires, which look something like this. They're professional, they're quick, there's conditional logic built into them. If they select the home section, they want to review their home, it brings up a list of questions that contain conditional logic. Is your home owned by a trust? Yes, please provide the name of the trust. At the bottom of the form, they hit submit, and the answers and the responses are sent directly to the agent uh, so that they can respond immediately. Under the new policies, they can hit the new policies button and there are uh, a homeowner's form. If I have a client that is buying a home, I would send them a link to this form by hitting the share button, copying the link and pasting it into an email from uh, my email program. And the other inquiries button is a simple email form and the refer a friend allows them to copy the link. So that's the gist of the public profile. Let's go back to the dashboard. In the dashboard, once people are logged in, they can see how many responses they received that month. They can go and view all their responses that they've received from clients. And they can view the actual responses that have the information from the client within them. They can print the submission uh, and save it to a PDF to attach to their management system. Or they can just attach the uh, notification that uh, was sent to them via email. The forms page gives them a list of all of the forms that are available for them to use and they can copy the links from there as well. We do have many um, agencies that wanna use this for all of their uh, agents. And so there is a group dashboard. And from here, uh, an administrator can send uh, this group link out to their agency force to have all of their agents sign up for their own, pro their own profiles. Uh, Julie Davis, uh, you can click, uh, as an administrator, you could click on her profile to, to see if she set it up. And, uh, and you can also view the client responses that she's received. So, you know, sometimes if an employee might leave, you want to see what responses they've received and, re and react to them, you can get into their account as an administrator. Uh, and on the main dashboard, there is uh, larger buttons for you to press as well to get uh, where you need to go. And so, you know, the gist of it as a, as a, a typical use case for me, um, you know, when I'm using this with a client, one of my com most common uh, forms that I use is the annual personal risk evaluation. And so I will just copy this link into an email form that I send uh, to a client 30, 60, 90 days ahead of renewal. And then uh, it sends to the client, the client fills out the form and I get it back. And through this form, I'm able to, you know, add value. You know, if a client says in the form, I started a business, you know, that's one of the most common responses. I can then talk to them about business insurance. If they say I hired a nanny or um, added a trust or we're doing a renovation, um, the form collects that information and then I can respond to the client with my advice or a product that can help them out with that situation. And I'll just take a, st uh, a breath there and uh, stop and see if uh, you have any questions. I do. I, I know that for most agents, their agency management system is their, you know, their oxygen um, for, for them to operate. Um, what are your plans to have this like uh, API or interact with all of the different types of management systems? so that uh, some, some elements of these forms can be pre-filled or um, you know, it works, they, work, they can work seamlessly with one another, delivering, pushing and pulling data back and forth. What are your plans on that side? Right, great question. I think the, the plan for that is to integrate those features as we can and as the, the need arises, because uh, I, I recognize that the, the seamless integration is obviously a huge time saver. Um, for me, as an agent, I've been using this for a few years, this type of, um, these types of forms, and just 
these alone have saved me a tremendous amount of time and allowed me to add a lot of value. So one of the benefits I think of this are the simplicity of the setting up of the setup process. Uh, and the fact that it takes five minutes to set up the profile and then you can immediately start using the forms. You don't have to worry about integrating with any systems. Um, Cause really this is just about gathering information from the client so the agent can re react to a situation or, or um, provide advice. Um, but I, I agree with you that those features are incredibly valuable. There's so many different possibilities for APIs and creativity with these, with this information uh, that, you know, the sky's the limit. I'm excited to, to approach those challenges uh, as we can. Um, but I wanted to get the value of this, of this particular process out to agents as soon as possible. What was the first form you created? The annual personal risk evaluation. So it was the, um, uh, it was a renewal questionnaire uh, for high net worth clients uh, that they could do online. And the first one was, and in fact, initially, uh, there was one for home, one for auto, one for valuables, and one for umbrella. So they had to fill out four. Um, and I had many people do it, and I was able to derive value from that for them and, uh, and for myself. And now it's all in one form, so it's a lot simpler and more streamlined um, and uh, able to derive a lot of value from that as well. Yeah, because you built um, some s smart elements in here. So mm -hmm. um, it, can, it can branch off depending on the answers of the questions, I'm assuming? That's correct. Yeah, for example, uh, there's a question, you know, are, are you doing any uh, major renovations to your home this year? Uh, if they answer yes, they say, great, what's the budget? Uh, how, what's the time frame? Have you selected a contractor? So it, and it asks uh, the questions related to that question for you. If they say no, it skips to the next question, uh, and they have a shorter questionnaire to fill out. Uh, Jen, go ahead. No, some, some of these, something like that is, uh, seems fairly complicated as well. Um, is, would that be used as an opportunity to then reach out to the, to the policyholder to acquire even more information? Or have you found that the forms itself pretty much do the, a lot of the heavy lifting and there doesn't necessarily need to be too much handholding? The forms do a lot of the heavy, heavy lifting, um, but in situations like a major renovation, there's often uh, additional questions that need to be asked. Um, so it's, re it's really the design of the forms was, and the intent was to have, to, to get as much information from the client in as short a period of, uh, of time as possible. Uh, so, you know, I don't want my clients filling out forms for 10 minutes and these lengthy forms with 100 questions in them. Uh, I want to uh, hit the major topics really quick, get the information I can in a short period of time uh, to, to make sure that that client experience is good, and then be able to follow up with the, uh, you know, with follow-up questions if there are any. Um, you know, one of the big benefits here is I have hundreds of clients and uh, it's very difficult to keep in touch with all of them, stay up to date with all of them. We do reviews, you know, uh, 30, 60, 90 days ahead. And sometimes we could sit with people, sometimes we can't, sometimes we could do a phone call, sometimes we can't. Um, this is a way for me to touch every single client and give them an opportunity to tell me what's going on in their life. And, you know, 20 to 50% of the time, they're telling me through the forms. So, I how does someone get access to Risk Review? So uh, Risk Review is a live website. It's riskreview.com. It's R-I-S-K-R-E-V-U.com. And you can search around the website, take a look and learn about it. You can sign up. We have three pricing plans, an individual plan, an agency plan for up to 10 users, and an enterprise plan for unlimited users. And, uh, and so, you know, that's probably the simplest way to do it. Uh, you can also contact me. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, and uh, so that's, that's pretty much how you can find out about it. Awesome. Awesome. I, I will put all of that information on the show notes for anyone that's listening or anyone that's watching. Uh, you can uh, go there and get to Risk Review or get to Kurt. Um, so, Kurt, why don't you uh, stop your screen share? Let's, okay. let's get your face back. There we go. And cool. Uh, this is, uh, thank you for showing the demo on that. That'll be very helpful. I will share all of that information on, on the show notes. Let's, uh, let's transition over to the personal side of, the, of profiles and risk. 
and ask you a few personal questions so that the listeners and the viewers actually get a feel for who Kurt is. So sure. uh, a new question that I've been asking yep. is uh, if you're stuck on an island, <laughs> what, what's the one album that you would take with you? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, I had to think hard about it, but I think it would be Billy Joel. Uh, uh, Billy Joel is a favorite of mine, has always been a favorite, and I've been singing his songs, you know, since middle school. <laughs> so I'm assuming it's Billy Joel's greatest hits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever one gives you the most amount of songs. Got it, yep. got it. That's awesome. Um, when you're not working, what do you enjoy doing? Uh, running, exercising, playing, playing with the kids, hanging out with family, uh, you know, playing golf. Uh, I'm, I just, I love being outdoors uh, and doing exercise. Um, so, you know, and if I'm not doing work at, at Ericsson, I'm playing around with technologies and, you know, researching that type of stuff. Yeah. But building, uh, building applications. Building applications. Yeah, ex exactly. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, what tools or techniques do you use or have you used that you found have been successful in keeping you productive and or organized? Uh, so one of the, the main tools I use is called uh, the uh, strategic planner, uh, which is actually a, a non-digital tool. Uh, it's just a piece of paper divided into three sections. And I do it every Sunday night. I plan out the week, you know, what are the critical three critical aspects of that week that I need to make sure are, are completed. Um, what are the projects that I'm working on that need to be pushed forward that week? And then who are the clients uh, that I need to reach out to or COIs that I need to, re need to reach out to to continue to develop relationships and, and provide service? Um, so that planning is ext extremely helpful. I also use uh, Asana.com for uh, project management. Uh, I use Slack uh, for collaboration. Um, HubSpot uh, to manage pipeline uh, matters. and uh, uh, risk review obviously is a daily tool and uh, uh, the, the management system. So, uh, but the strategic, strategic planner is uh, really where I set goals and, and yeah. set the course of the week. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, last question, what books have you found to be influential in your business and or personal lives? Sure. Uh, so uh, the, the one book that I know has been the most influential uh, is one that I read a long time ago uh, called Cold Calling is a Waste of Time. Uh, and, you know, I've been in sales uh, positions for most of my career, uh, if not all of it. And uh, I read this book and, you know, it just struck a vein and it, it, it switched my mind from going out and just forcing my way into a sale to relationship building. Uh, and and really focusing on the value that can be provided and and not trying to just take the company line and, and shove it down someone's throat by by cold calling. So uh, cold calling is a waste of time by Frank Rimbaskis uh, definitely changed my life. Um, and uh, I continue to think about that book uh, often. Uh, think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, it was also a, a very influential book. Uh, and uh, and then on the personal side, I'm a sci-fi uh, fan. Uh, so um, Terry Goodkind is uh, one of the authors I enjoy reading, The Wizard's First Rule. Uh, and so, you know, uh, so that's, that's for more on the personal side. But um, so I, I love being creative and, uh, you know, uh, thinking outside the box. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing and demoing risk review for anyone that's listening or watching. I will put all of the links on the show notes. So uh, connect with Kurt, uh, volunteer, and go check out risk review and see if it, uh, it fits what you need to do. Kurt, thanks so much. Thank you. This is great, great Nick. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, my guest this week has been Kurt Thurnison. Kurt, thanks again. You're very welcome. Thank you, Nick. Take care.